because people don't value conservation as much as they should, because they don't see it in their day-to-day -day lives, attempts to measure conservation in money always undervalue conservation. It occurred to me that we could use individual animals and plants as a kind of currency. We could use an accounting approach that was based on how many individuals of each rare species is left. So the less gold there is in the world, the more every remaining bit is valuable. The fewer rhinoceroses there are in the world, the more valuable each one is. How many of those threatened species do we find in protected areas at a global scale? Once we were able to find out how many animals, how many individual animals of all our threatened species persist in protected areas, and we could find out what proportion of the budgets of those protected areas comes from tourism revenues, tourists are visiting those places, we could work out how many animals are actually being protected by tourism. So it was basically, you know, a light bulb moment. And so then when we combined the idea of using number of individuals as a, as a conservation currency and proportion of budget as a measure of tourism contribution, when we linked those two together, we were able to calculate for threatened species worldwide what proportions of their remaining populations rely on tourism funding. We were able to use data from IUCN we wanted our information to be available not only to academics but to park managers and government environmental policy people worldwide. Most people, even in remote countries, even in remote parks, do now have internet access, but they don't have library subscriptions. We made that information instantly available, free, anywhere in the world. Globally, um, nations are looking towards meeting conservation targets for biodiversity. So nations everywhere have signed up to the Global Conserva uh, Convention on Biological Diversity and as such they have set targets to actually set aside areas for protection, set aside targets for meeting certain species requirements to prevent species extinctions and the work we've shown is that tourism can be used as a mechanism to actually deliver some of those goals and objectives. Um, so while um, the general public may not actually use the research directly they'll benefit indirectly from it through the potential um, policy decisions that might be making or might be taken by um, governments to assign more money towards protected areas, assigning more money to um, tourism developments um, where appropriate.